Uh, hi, I'm Robert Leach. I'm the Interim Deputy Chief Executive of the ICT Company. Uh, interim because I'm covering for maternity leave for a year. Um, I've had uh, 12 years involved in policing, both with BT eight years and Capita for nearly four years prior to joining the company. So what is the ICT company? The ICT company, uh, in short, is the pivot around which the stakeholders in the policing community come together uh, to uh, lead to a more consistent approach to ICT and the more effective spending of taxpayers' money towards uh, ICT that supports operational policing. And so who are the stakeholders within the ICT company? That would be the National Police Chiefs Council, uh, it would be the Association of Police and Crime Commissioners who are our owners, the Police and Crime Commissioners themselves pay an annual uh, fee, uh, shareholder fee if you like, uh, and they own the company, it's a private limited company. Uh, then there would be the College of Policing, there would be the Police Technology Council which is the ICT leads in each police force. Uh, there would uh, then also be the HMIC who would take a view and of course the Home Office um, who have an involvement as they hold many of the national systems today. Many of those national systems over time will be, be transferring ownership into the company. Right, so quite a few stakeholders there. Now you're not just interested in cyber security but of course that's our primary uh, interest. So we're, what we're interested in is how can the um, how can the ICT company help the police develop their capabilities uh, within cyber security? I think um, part of the challenge uh, historically, and it was spoken about today, is that uh, the risk of not trying to coordinate the requirements across 43 police forces is that 43 police forces requirements will be developed individually there will be a lot of repetition but there will also be some conflict and when police forces are encouraged by the Home Secretary and others to collaborate more the conflicting implementation of a solution or a capability will prevent that collaboration so our job which is um, nascent, it's what we're here to do, is to try and drive a more consistent approach to the way policing invokes the ICT that supports its operational requirements or its capabilities. So in the digital space there are three broad capabilities that come together that sit under digital policing. Digital public contact, investigation and intelligence which we've heard a lot about today and uh, digital first which is the evidential side the preparation of the information ready to go to the CPS. Right. So I suppose we'd be interested in sort of the digital investigation digital side of things. Yeah. So as far as digital investigations uh, concerned you heard about the, uh, the arrival of the capabilities management group uh, and Steve Kavanagh's role in leading that. Um, now they will determine what the problem is and have been doing so for the last few months. Um, articulating the problem among a large community of practitioners, they will then be determining what they think is the best approach to take operationally to solve the problem. Now I can't have, I'm involved in those conversations, but I'm not going to say you should do it this way. It's up to them to decide what to do operationally. But what the ICT company will do is we'll say it will uh, help them to determine the, the way forward by saying if you did it that way then ICT would be able to help in this way and if you are going to do it in a way that says I don't want to do it 43 different times the ICT company can be that facilitator of a level of consistency of approach so instead of going and telling 43 police forces we're going to do it uh, individually you, you can do it individually the ICT company would say we want to coordinate it and we will try and do it in a facilitated way that enables consistency in it, just could you explain kind of in a nutshell what the companies out there who are interested in engaging with the police need to be doing in order to achieve that consistency or I suppose that's part of it. Well I think the, uh, the first and most important thing that the ICT company has taken the lead on with the Home Office and with the Police Technology Council is to arrive at a set of standards for the way data is held and transmitted and accessed um, which is not to derive a, a new Bible of, st of standards but to get some principles out there so that the suppliers can modify their systems to the way in which we would like data to be seen to be held and it's, if it's held in the same way in the databases inside every competitor's product then those competitors can um, be the enablers of collaboration between police forces because one of the challenges at the moment is a police force has got a system from one supplier and that police force sits next to a system, uh, another force with a system from another supplier. They've both got data that should be the same. It's about nominals and people and objects and uh, locations and events. 
but they're held in such a different way that it's not easy for one police force to go through one supplier into another police force's domain to another supplier's system and interrogate that database. What can the ICT company um, do to help the suppliers negotiate this, um, you know, their way through the requirements of the police? Um, well, I think the first thing is to recognise what the, what the challenges that uh, the supply community has, uh, particularly the small to medium enterprises. And we've heard today um, many of them are uh, as frustrated as they have ever been about the access that they have to those in policing who are making decisions about what to do in terms of building capability for investigation, intelligence, digital forensics, cyber, the, the whole thing. Um, but if, if the police forces themselves recognise that they too have a challenge with the lack of access because they're not getting the benefit of the experience, the toolkits, the, the people, the commitment and the investment that has been made in those small companies to come to the market with their solutions. So we think that there has got to be a way and I've had lots of conversations with people like Steve Kavanagh who was here today about the prospect of doing this and indeed Tech UK um, we wrote a paper about this uh, 15 months ago or so um, and that is to find a way to allow for the supply community to engage with the buying community in a way that doesn't involve a single long-winded overburdensome specification loaded procurement process that could see half a dozen people bidding for it over a period of 18 months one winning and then for five years that one supplier being the chosen supplier and the other five not having a, a, a part to play and if you replicate that across many many different types of potential work that could be done in the DII space that's quite a lot of procurements it's quite a lot of disappointed suppliers and only a few successful ones and the risk here is that the market the buyers aren't getting access to all of that wonderful innovation that every supplier is obliged to continue to invest in because otherwise they don't make their money they don't make a difference so we think that some sort of managed environment where the supply community is accredited both financially and technologically and potentially security wise into the environment on the other side you have the buying community who would be obliged to uh, come to the community with its requirements either short term, medium term, complex or non-complex and under certain different categories so um, uh, child exploitation related might be one, um, domestic violence related might be another, I mean whatever they are it doesn't matter but the templates come across from the buyers the suppliers who've been accredited against their skill set bid for that work and all of the terms and conditions have already been sorted so they don't have to go through the rigmarole of a long procurement cycle the supplier can interview two or three of these if they want or they can take the lowest price if they want which I would uh, hesitate against but they can they can make their decision in a an open and agile way and move on and then when they finish that engagement, they can run another engagement. I think that there is definitely room for that in policing. And if the ICT company can have something to do with it, then that would be something to be famous for. I mean, this sounds like quite an exciting idea. I mean, does it also give rise to the possibility of collaborations between, you know, otherwise competing companies? Oh, absolutely. I think the standards work that we're leading on, along with the Home Office and the Police Technology Council, is absolutely fundamental. You can't expect uh, the supply community to... Uh, uh, modify its systems to towards a more collaborative environment of pl in policing mm. unless we arrive at a set of standards that they should modify their systems to mm. and uh, accrediting suppliers who have done that will be part of the ICT company's role so that um, a supplier who chooses not to conform to the standards may be inhibited from dealing with police forces now we can't make a police force not deal with somebody, that's their choice. What we can do is say that here is an accredited list of suppliers who've modified their systems towards the way data is held and exchanged and accessed. And then there'll be a sea change in the environment in that uh, no longer will anybody be able to say that the suppliers or the technology has been the inhibitor of change or the inhibitor of collaboration. It's quite an exciting idea, I suppose, for, for companies in the cyber security space as well, because even if you're, you're developing, you know, one of the big bugbears in cyber security is that uh, software um, is developed and security is often an afterthought because the companies that develop it don't have the in-house security expertise. It's kind of the last thing on their mind. Yeah. I suppose in this respect, you have the capability then, following that kind of model, you could bring 
as part of your collaboration, bring a cybersecurity company in at the beginning. Absolutely. We, um, we are not deriving standards without the supply community being involved. Can't, that, that is just an impossibility. Well, it's an impracticality. It's not an impossibility because it's probably been done before. But it's impractical for us to try and come to the market and say, these are the standards you need to adopt if a large component of the market hasn't signed up to the fact that those standards are appropriate. Right. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Robert.